Today's episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron is brought to you in part by DistroKid. If you've got some hot, fresh new tunes, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get them out to all the major platforms in the known universe, save 7% while doing it, and get a warm, fuzzy feeling for helping to support the channel so I can make more videos like this one. Howdy doody buckaroonies and welcome back to another episode of How Does Your Voice Sound Like That If I Can't See The Microphone? Today, we're gonna to be doing a video all about mastering from start to finish using isotope ozone elements. I've been asked to do this video a bunch of times and I'm assuming it's because ozone elements becomes a free plugin every once in a while and a bunch of you picked it up and want some tips on how to use it. So today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Ozone Elements is not currently free as of the time of making this video, but you can go out and buy it. However, I can't honestly recommend going out and paying money for it because I'm pretty certain in saying it was always intended to be a free plugin, so it's worth just signing up for the mailing list or whatever and waiting for it to become free again because it seems to do that at least once or twice a year. In the meantime, if you don't have Ozone Elements and you want some tips on mastering, I did do a video all about mastering from start to finish using only free plugins, and you can check that out with the little pop-up bubble. With that, let's hop in the DAW and uh, pop, lock, and drop it. In this video, we're going to be talking about how we can take our mix from this and turn that into this using only the power of isotope ozone elements. So let's saddle up our buckaroo pants and talk about the how and why. Here we are with the new instance of ozone elements just to start this whole process from the ground floor. So first off, the easiest way to master your track with ozone elements is to just use the master assistant. I will say that Isotope has come a very, very long way with this technology and I feel that it's pretty damn impressive. So if you know nothing at all about mastering or don't wanna fiddle with things too much or just need to turn something around for like a client project and you need kind of a quick and dirty job, the mastering assistant works pretty well. So let's use the master assistant and go for medium intensity. This is going to go to a streaming service and we're going to play the loudest portion of the track, which is going to be where this drop kicks in. So away we go. Let's start right at the drop. And that on its own, honestly, let's roll that back. It's pretty subtle, but I don't think that's all that bad. I think that's a perfectly passable result, but it is not doing a whole lot, and I think we can do better. So let's talk about how we can master with elements on our own. First off, let's start with mastering EQ, and I think Ozone Elements actually has a really fantastic EQ that's quite capable. So when I'm doing mastering EQ, I'm looking for three main things, the bass, the mud, and the energy. So let's start hunting for that. When I do mastering EQ, I typically like to work in mid side mode because this also helps us set up the stereo image nicely. So typically this is how I do things and we're just gonna walk through this way, but you can use essentially what I'm doing with the mid channel for the stereo channel if you wanna work in stereo, but I think mid side typically gives cleaner results. So bear that in mind. To get this party started, we'll make sure we have the mid band selected. I'm gonna solo that out. I'm gonna click the low end here and start things off by switching this to a bell curve. Then I'm gonna zoom out so I can get the maximum range of this EQ and really crank this up to hunt that perfect low end subby fundamental thump that this track would probably really benefit from because it's kind of a big energetic EDM-ish sort of deal. So let's play that and find where we wanna boost the low end. <laughs> Right around there feels pretty good, but this is really extreme. So what I'm gonna do is just widen this out a fair amount and drop this down to be more in the range of like a couple dB. You really gotta use your ears for this. Yep, 
Cool, I think that adds a nice bit of substantial weight to things. Next up, we're gonna grab band three and start hunting for the mud. So similarly, we're just gonna kinda narrow this out a bit, boost it up, and find where things just start to sound a little flubby. <laughs> Right about there sounds pretty boxy and kind of gross, so this is what we're gonna take out. You really gotta use your ears for this, again, and it's all pretty subjective based on the mix and material coming in, but typically we're gonna look for a region somewhere between like 200 to 500 hertz. So let's take this, widen it out, and start dropping it down. That adjustment alone already adds a bit more punch because we've gotten rid of the mud, we've boosted some of that fundamental stuff, and it just feels a bit more weighty now. So finally, we're gonna look for energy and we're gonna do that using band five. Energy to me typically lies around 1K to 3K. These are very delicate frequencies for human hearing. So by adding a subtle boost to it, it just makes the track sort of jump out at you. So in the mid-range channel, this is gonna be really effective to make the track feel pretty big and substantial and also help make sure that when the track is mono, it still feels nice and exciting. So we're gonna start at around maybe 1K, fairly wide boost, and just kind of move this up and down until we find the point where the track just starts to feel a bit more alive. Cool, that's pretty decent. I think we might add just a touch of kind of high-end sheen here. I think that's feeling pretty good. Let's check ourselves before we wreck ourselves by bypassing this and bringing it back in. I think that's pretty good. It's subtle, but it's there. We could maybe benefit from just tweaking this a tiny bit. I think that's feeling pretty good to me. Now let's move over to the sideband, solo this out, and we're gonna start by just high passing the sides. So I'm gonna switch this to high pass, flat mode, and bring this up just to gut the bass from the sides because we don't really want that and it's just gonna end up causing phase issues most of the time anyway. Cool, same thing, we're gonna hunt for the mud, we're gonna hunt for the energy, and for the stereo image, we're probably gonna lift up the top on the sides. This is a nice way just to make a mix feel pretty wide without doing a bunch of weird stereo imaging stuff, because I find stereo imaging tends to kind of ruin things a little bit, but we'll get to that in the next step. So, let's hunt for some mud, let's hunt for some energy. Bringing up that top. Just checking it with a bypass. Cool, I think that sounds pretty acceptable to me. With just the EQ, I think we've added some energy, some clarity, and just a bit of width and weight to everything. The next module in Ozone Elements is the Imager. So we can use this just to add a nice sense of stereo width to the track if it's sort of lacking. This mix is already pretty wide, but we might boost it just a teensy tiny bit by increasing the width slider. So we're just gonna do this to taste. <laughs> That's way too much. Sounds good, let's check it. Cool, I think that might even be a little much. Let's back off to like 10.
Cool, feeling nice and wide, let's move on to module three, the maximizer, and then we're essentially done. The maximizer in ozone is really, really, really good. And one thing we could do is just learn the threshold. Most streaming services are somewhere between minus 10 and minus 14 LUFs. If you wanna go for perfect LUFsiness, you can certainly just learn the threshold, play the track at the loudest part. And we're done. In my case, my track is already loud, so Ozone is saying you don't need any maximizing. However, LUFS is kind of a big subject, and really, when it comes to loudness with your master, you just want to make a track as loud as it needs to be to feel right. This track already feels pretty good, but I think it could benefit from just a bit more aggressiveness. So we're just going to start dropping that threshold down until the track feels right, if that makes sense. And right is as with most things in music, subjective to you and your personal taste. So I think the easiest way to figure this out is just to push it way too far and back off to where it feels comfortable. Cool. I think I'm good with that. Typically, I don't like to take off more than like four or five dB with my final limiter, and I think this sounds plenty loud. It sounds nice and upfront, but it's not too just absolutely squashed. Let's drop our ceiling down here to minus one dB and enable true peak mode. This way, it's going to be perfect for submitting to streaming services and whatnot. It's not going to be subject to any conversion errors. So we've got a nice loud master with a true peak of minus one dB to prevent any weird encoding stuff. From here, we can adjust a couple more things like the character of the compressor, the stereo independence, and the transient emphasis. The long and short of this stuff is kind of complicated, but not really all that complicated. The character slider here is just going to be how fast the compressor acts, or in this case, the limiter. So we're just gonna do this by ear. Since this is a pretty pumpy, energetic track, we're probably gonna need something a bit faster, but we'll try both for the sake of posterity. So honestly, I think where it was was just fine. The stereo independence controls the transient and sustain and how the limiter reacts to these things. So this is kind of a big thing that I don't want to get into, but really you can just move the sliders and you'll hear what it's doing and just use your ears. So we're going to try messing with the transient and sustain and how it's going to react to that. And I guess we'll probably just set them in the middle, link it and now we've got these, we'll unlink this so we can control both and let's see what we can do. I think that sounds good. It sounds nice and gluey, but it's still kind of snappy. Let's enable transient emphasis here just to make those drums snap through a bit more. This is going to control how the limiter reacts to transient information, basically sort of recovers the transient information instead of it being totally clipped off, if that sort of makes sense. So we're gonna bring this in just until we get a bit of snap back to everything. I think right about there sounds good to me, and we are now done. We can check our mix in mono if we wanted to. We could gain match this just to double check everything and make sure it sounds okay, and you're really done. At this point, we're essentially done with ozone. If we take a look at our track through an oscilloscope, it 
It's looking pretty solid, but I think that this mix could benefit from a little bit of bus compression, which Ozone Elements doesn't offer. However, there are plenty of alternatives for this. One of my sort of go-tos for this is the kilohertz compressor. We can set this up on RMS mode, use a ratio of around two to one, and then set the attack to around 15 to 30 milliseconds and a release somewhere between, I guess, 200 to 300 milliseconds. Then we're gonna start taking this off for about three to maybe eight dB, kind of depending on what you're aiming for. So we're gonna set the threshold all the way up and just sort of use this to glue the track together. And we can see this in the oscilloscope. Now that track is feeling a lot bigger and we've reduced our crust factor a good amount to have a nice big sort of sausage that still has enough dynamic information to where it doesn't feel just totally absolutely crushed. Another really good alternative to this is the Kilohertz Dynamics Processor because we can also use this as an upwards compressor to lift up some of the details of things in the more quiet sections. So for this, I like to set a ratio of like 1.1 to maybe 1.5 for the upwards compression and two to one-ish for the downwards. And then I'll adjust the threshold to taste and adjust the attack and release to taste and have a pretty soft knee as well as using the output gain to compensate for the processing. So let's kind of skip forward here to the drop and we'll just enable this. I've already got this set up. It takes a minute to tweak. So we'll just do kind of a quick before and after using dynamics instead. <laughs> And we can do that for some bus compression as well. Personally, I find that dynamics can really add a nice sense of energy to big aggressive tracks like this, but using the compressor is generally more suitable for general material. And that's pretty much all there is to it. That is how you can master your tracks from start to finish using ozone elements. And if you want a little bit of kilohertz magic just to glue things together and make a nice big old sausage. Ozone Elements is available now. As I mentioned, I don't really think this is something you should pay for. It will come up for free again at some point. I would probably wait for that, but it is something that's worth owning, I think, especially if you don't have any good mastering tools. It is a very solid plugin and it's perfectly capable of making really solid masters using just that plugin by itself, which is a great tool, I think, for creators and the mastering assistant, like I said, super, super useful tool, especially if you need to turn something around really quick. That wraps everything up for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.